Live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is Silicon Angle Media's production of theCUBE, the worldwide leader in enterprise tech coverage, and this is DockerCon 2017. We're here at the Austin Convention Center, uh, just had the day two kickoff uh, at the keynote. Uh, really, yesterday was the developer day, today is the enterprise day, and to help me break down the latest news and what's happening in the ecosystem, uh, I grabbed just some guy. <laughs> and, of course, uh, that's actually in his Twitter bio, which is why I do this, and uh, I happen to have a good friend of mine, a uh, good friend of the community, a Stephen Foskett, who is the organizer of Tech Field Day. Stephen, always great to see you, and uh, thanks for taking time out to uh, get a little casual and uh, dig into some open source developer uh, stuff. Yeah, you know, these are the developers. You know, I'm used to wearing my, you know, my fancy clothes, but uh, I figured I would uh, try to blend in a little bit here with the uh, the DevOps crowd at DockerCon. Yeah, I, I saw one of the demo guys had like a flashy jacket. I figured you'd come in in tails and yeah, uh, you know, well, all I, that. Yeah, I do but, usually uh, have flashy shirts and stuff on, but yesterday I felt a little out of place. I mean, these guys are, are uh, well, a lot of t-shirts here. Yeah, so, you know, today, not as many announcements, but uh, it's always interesting. Shows like Amazon, shows like this, it's like, okay, one day let's talk to the developers, and one day let's talk to the enterprise. What's your take on that? How is Docker doing with kind of their maturation, uh, and, uh, you know, what, what, what do you see in the marketplace? Yeah, I think that that's, um, that's really key to what they were planning. So yesterday, I don't want to say developer because it was developer and ops, but it was yep. basically traditional Docker day yesterday. And today is all about the enterprise. And I think that Docker had a very clear goal from today, and that was to really plant their flag and say, you know, not just, you know, Docker data center like last year, but, but that Docker is, is not only ready to be in the enterprise, and not only has the tools to be in the enterprise, but is already there with some major customers. Yeah, and you know, great customers uh, had, had Visa and MetLife up on stage, and no better way to say we're ready for you know enterprise applications than say, hey, uh, Oracle is in the store there. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what's your take? Anything on the customer case studies, uh, Oracle? Well, uh, let's take the customer case studies yeah. first. So um, clearly, the takeaway from the Visa presentation and the MetLife presentation was nothing more than Visa is using Docker in anger. MetLife is using Docker in anger. I mean, basically, these are massive traditional companies with absolutely critical workloads, you know, you know huge security requirements, you know, and they're using Docker in production. I think that, you know, seriously, if we would have all listened, you know, Ben could have stood up there and said, hey, everybody, Docker. MetLife, enterprise, production, and that would have been you know, a substitute for 45 minutes of discussion. Because it's not like Visa's really going to tell us like the secret ins and outs of their infrastructure, but they told us the most important thing, which is that a lot of those transactions are running through Docker containers. And that's what Docker wanted us to hear. Yeah, uh, it was interesting. Ben uh, kind of blew up the myth of bimodal uh, IT. Uh, and one of the things that we've been kind of looking at and want to get your opinion on is taking my older applications and just kind of wrapping and moving them. Without changing a line of code, I can bring this into this environment, what you know, many of us call for years lift and shift. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about kind of the you know, modern building new applications versus the old applications? And of course, uh, you know, customers don't have like two IT environments. They, they usually need to you know, move things together and you know, have, have kind of a whole strategy. Yeah, and, and uh, well, I, I'm, I'm ambivalent about this whole um, concept of bimodal IT, but I'm not ready to reject it. Um, I think it still matters uh, from an app perspective, from an app-to-app -app perspective, and I think it's absolutely true that there are multiple kinds of apps. In fact, I think that there's probably more than two kinds. I think that's maybe the, the real problem. You know, you've got the real traditional applications. You know, Southwest just announced that they're moving their reservation system you know, uh, forward from some old mainframe to some new mainframe, and that's causing all sorts of disruption and travel. Um, those kind of applications, and then there's the more, um, you know, open systems packaged applications from the 90s and the 2000s, um, and those things can be moved forward. And then there's sort of the applications that can be really modernized with containers, 
and then there's the applications that you can microservice-ize, and then there's real cloud applications. So it's not just bimodal IT, it's really um, you know, octamodal IT. You know? Yeah, and, and I, I like, because Ben put it up there, it was a journey uh, that they talked about. It's, yeah. you know, let's get everything on kind of a you know, shared platform and have a way that we can do it the old way, start breaking it apart into more uh, you know, pieces, or you know, totally rewrite. Because yeah. we know, uh, you know the migration costs of having to rewrite an application it's really tough, it's you know, really you have to do. But it's something that, you know, for too long people are like, oh well, I'll just run on that really old application that kind of sucked for way too long. So, you know, I, I, I know sometimes I'm getting on my soapbox and being like, please, your users hate that application um, and they, they'd like to be a little bit more modern. But it, it's not an easy thing and there's, you know, multiple paths to get there. Yeah. Uh, th there was an announcement, uh, they called it the Modernized Traditional Applications. Uh, any take on that and, uh, you know, how that fits into the, what the discussion we were just yeah, well, they, they talked about that a little bit today. Um, not to put in too much of a plug, but we actually had a 45 minute discussion of that with Tech Field Day on Monday, yeah. and um, it was embargoed. Yeah. But the video is actually uploaded now, and so if you just Google Tech Field Day, Docker, Modernized Tradition Applications, um, there's a much deeper dive into that and really what that means. And essentially, it's a take on the old, uh, you know, the P2V strategy that we saw in virtualization. Yeah. That it is possible to literally just scoop up, you know, a traditional application and put it in a container. But it's doing more than that. And um, you know, there's all sorts of things that are going on here. They're identifying, you know, which components are part of the application. They're helping you uh, set up the network so that the application will connect still the right way. And um, you know. I think by choice, uh, Docker didn't really want to emphasize all the real nuts and bolts. I mean, they showed a, a great, well, <laughs> an, an amusing demo of, of this in action um, with Ben playing the straight man uh, at the keynote, and that's worth watching as well. But um, yeah, it, it remains to be seen to what extent they're going to be able to modernize traditional applications and containerize traditional applications. Okay, so uh, Stephen, one of, one of the things that is uh, probably the least mature in the Docker ecosystem is storage. I know it's something you've spent uh, some time digging into. What's your take on where we are with storage in containers, where it needs to go, uh, you know, what, what, what's truth and reality? Yeah, well my, uh, so yeah, as you say, I mean, I'm, my background is storage, uh, and I love storage, um, I really do. Uh, but absolutely, Docker, um, when I first started experimenting with Docker, I was really blown away by the, the sort of amateur hour storage approach that they took. I mean, it was essentially, uh, here's a company that knows nothing about storage or networking, building a storage and a networking system. Um, you know, what's wrong with these people? But over time, I've kind of, um, I, I've, 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 my view has become a little more nuanced because I see that what they were, Docker wasn't trying to build uh, an enterprise grade storage infrastructure. They were trying to build a storage layer that would allow you efficiently to deploy containers. The whole idea always was that storage would be external to the container. And if you're using internal container storage, if you're using the, the, the layered file systems, you're doing it wrong if you're doing any kind of real I.O. And so, you know, we saw um, a proliferation of plugins to allow you to use like real storage systems, enterprise storage systems from, you know, I mean, uh, Ben mentioned uh, Nimble and NetApp and companies like that. And um, in addition, we're starting now to see a whole raft of really interesting, um, basically container storage arrays. So, you know, you've got companies like Storage OS and Portworks um, developing uh, real, you know, enterprise concept storage specifically targeted at containers. And I think that that's really what's going to happen is we're going to have uh, the containers using the layered Docker storage, but real uh, heavy I.O. and enterprise applications are either going to use plugged in enterprise storage or Dockerized enterprise storage. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it reminds us a lot of what we saw with virtualization. Absolutely. I mean, we've been a decade fixing that. Uh, I actually remember uh, at Intel Developer Forum, uh, yeah, gosh, was it like two years ago, like Nick Weaver, good, good friend of ours, works over at Intel, used to work at EMC, yep. uh, you know, goes to the presentation, I get up the end, I'm like, hey Nick, you know, how are we going to solve all these issues like we did for VMware? And he was like, oh my God. And yeah. it's pretty much the same you know, story, isn't it? It, it is the same story. Um, you know, we're seeing basically the same thing, like, so, like virtual storage appliances equals but container the, storage the appliances. The oversimplified thing of it for me is I felt like we moved along faster 
posture with storage and networking took a long time in the virtualization layer. I mean, and here we and, and here it's flipped. Is networking yeah. seems to move along a little bit faster, and, and, and storage is there. And as you said, it's a little nuanced as to what that storage solution looks like. It's not just like oh, we put it all in the hypervisor and eventually it works, and we do everything yeah. in the VM layer. It's like it's like well. Containers are a little bit different. Uh, yeah, so. and some of these contor uh, container storage solutions are really clever. Yeah. Um, they've taken the lessons from virtualization, uh, from cloud storage. I mean, they're building you know distributed storage. It's really cool. But I think there's another thing to think about there too, and that's that Docker uh, invested pretty heavily in um, creating a I don't want to say a real enterprise networking layer, but a better networking layer for Swarm. And I think that that may be a road sign of what they may do for storage as well. I think we may see Docker developing a more advanced storage layer, um, maybe not an enterprise storage layer, but at least uh, something scalable, something distributed with uh, for Swarm customers. Yeah, um, I want to get just a little broader from you, just your take on you know storage these days. I look at, you know, you know, adoption of Amazon. VMware is going to go on Amazon. Uh, look, you know, Azure Stack's coming out this summer, and you know, we're going to have the you know S2D uh, as the storage layer uh, uh, for, for what that's built on. Uh, what, what's the storage market look like? You know, from from the Foscat viewpoint today. Well, storage is really conservative, yeah. and um, you know, when you talk about the market um, and you talk about the technology, these are two very different things, yeah. and so. Um, the technology is rapidly advancing. Uh, you know, we're seeing, you know, the world is right now being blown away by the current wave, which is distributed NVMe, you know, ultra high performance flash storage, um, you know, exemplified by a company like Accelero, for example. Um, that's absolutely the coolest stuff out there right now. Um, but then the market is still adopting SAN. You know what I mean? The market is still, you know, hey, should we implement iSCSI? You know, hey, should we move, you know, should we look at NFS v4? You know, things like that. And it's like, it's a real kind of facepalm thing because you look at the, the reality of storage and it doesn't keep up with the promise of enterprise storage. But um, yeah, and then there's the whole, the whole aspect of sort of cloud storage, off-premises storage. And that is also, you know, a potential game changer for the market, but you know, overall, I, I would say that, that you'd be a fool to bet on radical transformation of storage. It's just not going to happen. You know, that's why you know HP is going to get tremendous value out of buying Nimble. That's why you know NetApp and you know Dell EMC are going to be selling a lot of product for a long time because um, although they're you know innovating and advancing and keeping up with some of these uh, you know, new waves of storage, the truth is most buyers are buying very calm, boring stuff still. All right, uh, Steven, unfortunately we're running low on time. I want to give you the final word. Let, let's talk about the community aspect. I love, you know, you come into a lot of these open source shows, you know, it's just got a, you know, a great vibe, you know, enthusiastic, really uh, people that want to learn. And you know, I know that always excites me. Uh, it's the kind of thing that, that uh, you love hanging out with those people too. Yeah. What's your take on kind of the Docker ecosystem and community? It's, it's wonderful. I mean, it reminds me of, um, you know, how VMware was, um, you know, back, you know, the last decade. It's, it's a warm, inviting, exciting community. And one of the things that I really want to highlight here at DockerCon that I've seen is that it's a lot more of a diverse community than I've seen traditionally in IT. I'm more of, you know, in enterprise IT, and so there's a lot of, you know, people walking around that look like me. And looking here, there's a lot of people that don't, and that is fantastic. I mean, Docker has done a great job of emphasizing diversity. Uh, they've got on-site childcare. They've got, you know, uh, I mean, Solomon tweeted that there's 20% women attendees wow. at DockerCon. To me, yeah, the vibe is great, but wow, you know, talk about broadening IT and talk about modernizing IT. That's modernizing IT. All right, well, Stephen Foskett, always great to catch up with you. Sure, I will see you at many conferences throughout our, our travels throughout the year. And we've got a full day of coverage here from DockerCon 2017. Uh, Solomon Hikes is coming on. We do have Visa, who did the case study. Uh, many other uh, partners, Oracle, who made an announcement today. Uh, I've got a couple of service providers who actually participated in Stephen's uh, 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 TFDX event here before the event, so uh, stay tuned for all our coverage and thank you for watching theCUBE.